And welcome back to another CBB Talk with your boy, Will Dignton. Have a day, and because tomorrow is the final four, and the video, I promise you, a little final four preview. I'm wearing my NC State shirt, because guess what? They're in the day I'm final four, so we're going to give you a little preview, my predictions, and then we're going to give you a, I should be able to give you a video after the final four. I don't know, I don't know when that's going to be, but it will be after the final four. And yeah, we have two games. Um, this will be in Phoenix, Arizona, Glendale, in the Cardinals um, football stadium, State Farm Stadium. Um, and I always love the Final Four. One, just the vibes. The vibes are always immaculate at the Final Four. I love the elevated court. I think that's it's a cool feature just for the Final Four. You get to see the benches below the court. I think that's really cool. You always just see that the, the stadium's different, always a different vibe. The first year without Jim Nance on the call, um, but I'm sure Ian Eagle will do an amazing job. But yeah, the Final Four always just has a great vibe to it. We saw like the three point contest. I think Kasei Tomiyago won. So shout out to the Japanese Curry for winning the three point contest. I don't know who won the dunk contest. Was it the Grand Canyon guy? It might have been. Golki was there. Great vibes in the Final Four. The women's is today. Um, I'm also wearing an NC State shirt. They're also in the women's. They're playing South Carolina. Don't see them winning that game. And I'm rooting for, I hate to say, I'm rooting for UConn over Iowa. I like Kaelin Clark and all, but uh, give me Paige Beckers uh, in that one. There should be two amazing games. But we got to talk about the men's front four because that's what this video is about. Four teams remaining. And let's start with this first game. It's on TBS. It's the one seed Purdue out of the Midwest region against the 11 seed NC State out of the South region. Of course, we wouldn't start. We're going to start with the one seed Purdue. Um, this team, Purdue, I believe I had them ranked third in the preseason poll of mine. I think they were probably around the same in the real poll, and they've been in my top three all year. I don't think there's a time this year where at the end of the week um, I had Purdue outside of my top three. And it's just because, yeah, they, they started the season off at three. By the time it was the first week, the, by the time it was week three, they were ranked one. But they've been inside the top three all year, and it's because they've been a juggernaut. Um, they've been at number one for many weeks, uh, but they haven't been number one, I don't believe, in a while. So they haven't been number one since, I believe, week 10. But they've always been in the top three. They ended the regular season at three. This team is led by, of course, the man, Zach Eady. Um, He's probably the greatest college basketball player in the last – decade I would say um I'm not a fan of him but I have to respect greatness but what makes this team different from past teams and especially last year who was a one seed that lost to Fairleigh Dickinson is the growth of their guards um especially Braden Smith he went from last year being a freshman who was not as confident and wasn't as reliable to this year as a sophomore being that second main scorer but also being one of the best playmakers in the country doesn't turn the ball over a lot and can give you a you know, respectable effort on the defensive end. And also the growth of Fletcher Lawyer. You see the other guy to only have a little bit of a decent game against Tennessee um, was Fletcher Lawyer. I think he had like 14, 13, 12 points in that one. And then they brought in a guy from Southern Illinois, Lance Jones, who has been the glue guy to this team. Purdue's not the biggest team in the backcourt, but Lance Jones is a bigger body. He can really hit the three. And we saw he had a big dagger three against Tennessee. I think they get to lead the six. And that really kind of put the game away. He's had so many big moments this year. And he wasn't my transfer of the year in the Big Ten. That was Marcus Domask, who was his teammate um, at Southern Illinois. Uh, I will say Lance Jones has been really, really good this year. Um, and he's been one of the main reasons why Purdue's in this Final Four. And they're going to be – they're a big favorite. I think they're a nine-point favorite to get back to, to the national championship game and try to get their first national championship in school history. But they won't be able to do that without, of course, Zach Eady, who, what else can I say about him? I mean, he's dominant in there. And, yeah, I think the fouling is a little interesting. Actually, the line's down to eight and a half. I think it opened at not nine. So maybe this line's going down a little bit. And, look, both these games have big spreads, but I think one of them will be close. And for Purdue, if they want to win this game, obviously, they're going to have to attack Eady and play great defensively on a guy like DJ Burns and, DJ Horn and it's gonna be an interesting matchup. I'm sure he, I th I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be confident saying that Edie I don't know if Edie's gonna guard Burns and maybe he will because I don't know if Burns can back down Edie, but I'm gonna say that 
Edie could also roam off. There's no three set. You can stand the paint and a burn size attack. You can just be right there. Um, and maybe they put Trey Kaufman right on him because they don't want to get him in. The, they don't want Edie in the foul trouble. We'll see. But of course, a foul talk has been a big thing for Purdue. They don't foul and they get fouled the most in the country. And yeah, the rest guarding Edie is a little interesting. I think a lot of times Edie does stand the paint for a while or will kind of go for a rebound over the back of someone and they never call it because he's tall. And I think, yeah, the, I think the refs try their best, and it's probably hard to ref someone like Edie, who's seven four, who's big, who is not, who can is nimble, is strong like that, which is very rare for a seven four guy, but he is. And I understand it's hard, but they think I think well, this is the last year, but I the refs in this game, I hope they don't call the ticky tack fouls on Edie. They don't or against on Edie like. If you're going up, you're pushing him. I think that's a, that's fair because if not, if you don't push him, he's just going to get the ball one step, right-hand hook, his go-to over that left shoulder, and it's going to go in about 75% of the time. Um, so I think in this one, he's also got his foul shots. He kind of struggled against that Tennessee game, um, which really kind of kept Tennessee in it. But this Purdue team, Matt Painter's done just an amazing job um, from you know losing the double-digit seeds in now three straight tournaments. I guess it could be four straight. They could still lose to a double digit C, which is, would be hilarious if NC State won this game. Um, but you gotta look at it and be like, this is the best chance for Purdue ever. Matt Painter's done an amazing job, probably the greatest coach in Purdue history. If he wins this game, um, brought back this team is just so impressive. The way to bring the guys together after such like a hardship they had to go through. So it's very impressive. And yeah, this is the greatest chance for Purdue basketball history, man. You're, this is your chance. You're a one seed. You're going against an 11 seed in the Final Four. No 11 seed has ever made the national championship game, and this is a six one ever make it to a Final Four. And let's talk about that 11 seed in NC State. Uh, we see this NC State team is probably one of the greatest runs of all time. This team was finished nine and eleven in the in the ACC. I think they were the 10 seed. They were the 10. They ranked. They finished 10th in the ACC. They have to go play on the Tuesday, which is like. Man, if you're on Tuesday, you're just looking to maybe get a win and hopefully uh, get to play one more day before your season ends. They're down to lonely Louisville in the first half of that game. Uh, but wow, after that, they come back, beat Louisville. That game was out D without DJ Horn. Many people forget DJ Horn was hurt in that game, um, got hurt in the end of the regular season, didn't have Horn in that one. Horn didn't play, they almost lost. Then they get DJ Horn back for their next games, and he's coming off the bench. They play a Syracuse team. They're underdogs. They win that. Then they got their quarterfinal game against Duke. No one thinks they're going to win this game. Duke was my pick to win the ACC tournament. Boom, they go and upset Duke. They go and play Virginia in the semifinal. Virginia should have won this game. Reese Beatman hits two technical, misses two technical foul free throws. Then four, well, four or five seconds, McNeely gets fouled. One and one, up three, 89% free throw shooter, misses. And then uh, Michael O'Connell goes down, banks in a prayer three, sends the game to overtime, and NC State wins. And then they have to go to the championship game, another game they have to win against their rival, Carolina. And they beat Carolina. And, man, NC State makes the NCAA tournament, and they still have continued this run uh, and now have won four in a row against Texas Tech. Um, they're, the team that kind of gave them the, the toughest challenge was Oakland. They win the overtime in that game. They go and beat Marquette. And then they go pretty much handle Duke in that second half. And now they're in the Final Four. Kevin Keats went from being on the hot seat. Shout out to Kevin Keats. I didn't meet Kevin Keats when I went to this. I think this was from my high school. We had played some games over there in the women's gym. And we played some in their, I don't even know what you call it, like rec center. But shout out to Kevin Keats. Uh, he went from being on the hot seat to now being a guy who's going to be a legend there and he's going to have the job for at least five more years because he just got NCC to the first Final Four in 40 years. So I will, I mean, it's just, a, it's an amazing job, an amazing story for NC State. Very similar to the Jim Valvano run, man. Um, This is, it, it's a legendary stuff and, and it's come with a guy who's become an, an instant legend in DJ Burns, man. I mean, since I live in the Raleigh area, uh, people I've known about DJ Burns for uh, since last year, and and it, just because NC State hasn't been good, he hasn't been got the national rec recognition. And look, what he's doing now is 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 not normal. He he averaged thirteen points this year, 
Um, I got DJ Horn was on my second team All ACC, so he was he's been the star in this team. The transfer from Arizona State, but um, he's his, in the in in the postseason. His game has elevated to another level, and he's had now multiple twenty point games in the tournament. He's been dominant. And it's, it's it, he's such a joy to watch, man, because his game, when you see him out there, you don't think he should be mobile and quick and light on his feet. But his go to move is that spin move around floater. He's so good at it. And once he gets a couple dribbles into your body, he's so good at scoring. It's not the prettiest man, but he gets the job done. And I lo- I'm going to love to see two different guys who have completely two different bodies go against each other like Edie and Burns. I don't think Edie, Burns is going to guard Edie. I'm sure it's going to be Di- Diara. Um, or Middlebrooks when he comes in there. But this NC State team has a chance to do something that no team's ever done is to be an 11 seed and go to a national championship game. And it's not going to be easy, man. Purdue is an absolute force, and they had the best player in the country here. But there's something about this NC State team. They believe that they can win this game, man. And they truly believe that they're here for a reason. The why not us mentality that they've accepted the DJs leading their way, but they've had other guys. Casey Morcell, the guy from Virginia who's now been there for two years, has really elevated his game. Michael O'Connell went from a very small role player to having big time moments. And then you and then Ben Milbrooks has had good games. Diara with the rebounding. He's had multiple double doubles in the tournament. He's they've all been very consistent players. And they don't have a lot of bench production, but uh JJ JJ Taylor can come in and make plays. Milbrooks has been good. So this NC State team has a chance to win this game. Yeah. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not. But I'm, I'm probably going to bet State to cover the eight and a half. I've been riding with NC State this whole tournament. I've been betting with them, betting on them, betting on them to cover their spreads. And shit, they've won outright in every one of those games as an underdog in every game except Oakland. And I bet, I bet Oakland that game. So I've got every NC State game right on this one. But this is going to be such a good game. Um, I think Purdue's going to win, but I think it's going to be close. Bronny, okay, Bronny declared for the draft, but is also entering the portal. I he should not go to the draft. He should he should take another year in college, go into the portal. But besides that, that should be a really good game uh, between State and Purdue. I'm excited for it. That's the first one, six oh nine, um, Eastern time. That's gonna be four or three. I don't know if it's three hours or not in Glendale. It, Arizona is so confusing to me. Um, but that's a great one to kick it off. I'm going to take a quick break, and then we're going to go to this Alabama-UConn game and talk about two more teams that have a chance of the glory. The second matchup of this Final Four is at 8.49 p.m., also on TBS. It's the four seed Alabama Crimson Tide out of the West region going up against the one seed, the number one overall seed, the reigning champs, the UConn Huskies out of the East. A matchup where the spread is 11 and a half. Oh, man. That is insane. 11 and a half in the Final Four from a 1 and a 4 seed. This UConn team has been on a different level. We're going to start with Alabama. The first Final Four in school history, and this is coming off a year prior to whether the number one overall seed had the top college player drafted, um, and they were really good. But this year's team is similar in a way as they're one of the best offenses in the country. They average the most points per game in the country, and they don't play great defense. But that's the reason they weren't the best team in the country this year is because their defense has been worse. But they've been able to string together now four great games. And this Alabama team this year, I think I had actually preseason ranked, but most of the year they were – I had Alabama in my preseason, the last team ranked at 25. And look, Alabama – I'm going to be honest. Alabama was in my rankings most of the year. Um, and then they really just fell off during the end of this year. Uh, they were kind of out of it at the beginning. They really didn't get back into my, when was the first time they were back in my rankings? They got in my rankings in week 12. Um, and then they were in it most of it, but they weren't in my rankings to end the regular season. They were playing bad basketball and I was truthfully not really a believer in this crimson tide team they dropped out week 17 on march 3rd and they didn't get in my rankings until not even around they didn't get in my rankings until after the round of 32 so i will say with alabama is they're a team i didn't believe in i had them losing the second round to st mary's and now they're in the final four and the main reason of that is because of mark sears who's been truthfully 
the top five point guard in the country. You saw in my video yesterday, if you haven't watched, go watch it, my All-American teams. He was on my second team All-American. He was a finalist for SEC Player of the Year for me, first team All-SEC guy. He's elevated his game this year to be in another level. I mean, last year he was a – I think he started for this Bama team, but this year he's become the main scoring threat, averaging over 20 a game, has great range. And I hate to say this, but the aura around Mark Sears is Jalen Brunson-like. I've been saying this now for weeks. I, this is before like it became popular about the Jalen Brunson. I heard it from one guy. I can't remember who it was, but this was before everyone was saying it. It was like a month or two ago. They were saying, I was like, I like that. I'm going to get onto that bandwagon and start saying it. So I've been saying it now, and now it's become really popular. But Mark Sears is a guy. He's a, he's a left. I believe he's lefty. Is he lefty? I don't know. But he, he is such a good jumper. He didn't get open, step back threes, and we saw him hit. I think seven threes in that game against Clemson in the Elite Eight. But the reason Alabama is there is because, one, their defense has improved a lot in this tournament from what they were in the regular season. But also, their role players have. Um, we can start with Grant Nelson, who had an amazing game in that Sweet 16 against um, UNC. And before that, Grant Nelson was not playing good. He, he's had really one good game this tournament. He wasn't good against Clemson. But that one game that Grant Nelson had is the reason they're here in the Final Four. So you got to give props to him. They're gonna, He's going to have to play amazing in this game against UConn. But then you have a guy like Nick Pringle who had a great Elite Eight game. He's their big. He's not the strong, He's not the biggest dude for being a five. But he's going to have the, the, the challenge of guarding Klingon. Um, that's going to be tough for Bama. But look, the reason if Bama's going to beat UConn, it's going to be because they can make threes. But then you have Ryland Griffin's one of the best shooters in the country, and every time he shoots it, I just think it's going in. He's one of those players for me. His jumper is so clean. He has a strap on him, and he's probably going to have to – I'm guessing he's guarding Tristan Newton in this game, but maybe Cam Spencer. He's their best perimeter defender. And then Jaron Stevenson, the freshman. I've said this a lot, but I've played against him. He is the guy off the bench who can go off and hit the three. He's also a bigger guy. Um, Sam Walters um, can shoot the ball off the bench. And then Aaron Estrada is another secondary scorer that starts alongside Mark Sears. But the reason Alabama can beat UConn is it's slim, but they always have the chance of going off any certain game because they're going to have to probably shoot 30, upper 30, maybe 40 threes in a game. They want about half their shots to be threes. And when you shoot that many threes, you always have the chance to win a game. Um, yes, they could get blown out if they're not hanging their threes. But we saw them beat UNC from hitting threes. They beat Clemson from hitting threes. It's what they do. They're going to want to get in the track meet. Is UConn the team you want to get in the track meet with? I'm going to be real. Probably not. But that's what Alabama's you know, forte is. It's their goal is to shoot a lot of threes, get out in transition, um, layups and threes. And Nate Oates has done an amazing job. He, he brought this Alabama program from really nothing. Um, he was great at Buffalo. And now he's brought Alabama to his first Final Four. They were in a, two Sweet 16s prior to this. He's done an amazing job. And the Crimson Tide of one went away from going to a national championship, two wins away from, you know, reaching the mountaintop and being the national champion. But they have to go through the best team in the country in UConn. Um, look, I was on the UConn best team in the country now for – I had Houston kind of over them, but I had UConn there for about for – about, five or six weeks in the preseason i wasn't high on uconn they lost a lot of players you gotta think this team won the national championship i am eighth in the preseason they lost to no go the final four mvp jordan hawkins lottery pick uh andre jackson i believe a first round pick that team lost a lot of key players but now look where they're at this if they win the national championship this year they're probably a top two or three team in my lifetime this team is a jugger, not I've been saying this for a while. And the way they do it is not by one guy. Um, Tristan Newton was my second in, in my second team All American, my Big East player of the year. He's not the prettiest player. Um, and he's not the guy that everyone looks at when you go to this UConn team and be like, that's the guy you gotta look out for. But he's the most consistent player. He's the playmaker. Um, he's a great defender. He can rebound. He's got triple doubles. He's the engine, the lead force, the head of the snake on this UConn team because of the, how poised he is, how experienced he is. He's not afraid of any moment because he's been there before. Um, and then the guy who's really took this UConn team to the next level has been Donovan Klingon. He's going to be a lottery pick, probably a top 10 pick. Um, and it's because, yes, like Edie, he's very tall. I think he's 7'2". But the way he 
plays defense, block shots, alter shots. He had five blocks in that lead eight, and it probably should have been more. Um, he's a great scorer down the paint, and if they match up with Purdue in the national championship, which I think will happen, I think he's the best guy that he can go against because he can he can bring the same size um, and strength as Edie. Um, so, yeah, he was my third-team All-American because the way he's elevated his game in the March Madness, in the NCAA tournament, has been insane. They brought in Cam Spence from Rutgers, instant game changer. He, If he was on Duke, he'd be the most hated player in college basketball. He loves to get under people's skin. He likes to fire it up. You can, you always see him do a major pump, um, like a little pump. What do you call that? Fist pump. I don't know what you call it. Just pump his chest, do whatever to get the crowd into the game. He talks shit. He's such a good shooter. And with UConn's offense, it's so beautiful. They have constant motion, and they get the best shot available. Stefan Castle, man, I'm a huge fan of his. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I want him to be a top ten ish pick. He's a freshman that, yes, maybe he's not the best um, shooter, and he's not the best offensive player. But the way he is able to one just guard one of the best players. I I don't know if he's gonna have the Mark Sears assignment, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did. I think he's really a really good player, um, and I think he has great upside. And if his offensive game comes, then I could see him being an NBA All Star. Um, Carabam, sophomore guy, starter last year. He's got better this year. Dr. Off the bench has been really really good. And they don't have great bench production, but Samson Johnson comes in, and when they're when he's in the game, their offense changes to a lot more of pick and rolls, alley oops up to him. And then they have some, like, Ball can come in and give you good minutes. Um, I think he's a freshman as well. Look, UConn is going to win this game. I'm going to bet him to cover this 11 and a half. Until I see something otherwise, UConn has shot the ball under 25% from three and have dominated every opponent. Imagine they get hot from three this game. It's over. And, yes, Alabama can hit 16 threes and maybe win this game. But even if they hit that many threes, I still think they lose. This UConn team is just different, man. Um... And I, I, I want to see a UConn-Purdue final. I'm not rooting for Purdue. I'm rooting for NC State. But if that happens, at least it's the best two teams in the country going at it for the Natty. And that's what we deserve after us loyal college basketball fans have been, you know, hearing hate for the sport's not good or blah, blah, blah. Um, this tournament has delivered. It doesn't have that Cinderella story. But this NC State team, yes, it's not Cinderella, but it's a fucking great story. So, yeah, the Final Four, I'm picking Purdue. I'm picking UConn to go into the Natty tomorrow. Should be a great one. Um, I'm rooting for UConn tonight in the women's. That's going to be a great game. Uh, I'm not the biggest – I've never been the biggest, like, fan of the women's game. But I will say, what if you're not watching, you got to watch that game, at least the UConn-Iowa game. I recommend watching uh, the South Carolina game because that team is really, really good. Camila Cur- Cordoso is a very good big for South Carolina. And NC State's had a great run. They're in the Final Four in both men's and women's. And then, obviously, Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, Leah Edwards. Um, that's going to be a really freaking good game um, against two of the best programs in college bat- and women's ball. Uh, but, yeah, the men's game, I'm super excited for tomorrow. Man, the Final Four. I'm so excited. All right. Uh, it's 11, 12 now. A little late, I promise, but this video should come out about 11.30. And thanks for watching, and let me know your Final Four picks. Make sure you subscribe, and thanks for watching, and peace.